This video series will explore some of the challenges involved in controlling multiple cameras for a reality TV show. Typically, this would be PDC cameras, and sometimes it's part of a bigger setup, with uh, such as VSM to control multiple things in the broadcast facility, or you have a video router, which is the established way for the PDC operators to select sources on the screen. And in uh, this video series, the first thing we want to do is to see how a Skyhoy controller can listen to a router and use the change on routes to select the camera on the Skyhoy controller. So we will uh, be working with the PDC Extreme, which is the typical choice for reality TV shows when we think about Skyhoy controllers. So let's just um, set this one up for the blue pill that I am on right here. So the PDC Extreme is now added. And quite often, if you have a PDC Extreme, you will um, just see that in here, the, the blue pill server, which is currently the host of my little demonstration. This guy, this is the ultimate power tool that will allow any Skyhoy controller, including Unisketch controllers, to tap into the power of the Blue Pill platform and what Reactor, or panel management software, has to offer you. So uh, it doesn't really matter. It's the same thing for you guys. I just add a PPC Extreme as an external panel here. And um, with that, we would typically also add some cameras, right? So we will discover devices on our network. I am not so lucky that I have a ton of PDC cameras, so we'll have to just do with what we can find. But I do have a CIN 500 camera here, so I'll just add that as the first one. So you see this is now included. And then in addition to this camera, and it's now connected as well, I can add a number of cameras which would remain unconnected for this session. So let's just do that. And then uh, in the manual listing here, I already filtered on Canon, we can see. So we have a number of Canon cameras and I'll hold down the shift key on my keyboard and then I'll just click some of these like this. Okay, uh, what about also adding a Panasonic camera? I think that would be nice for the um, occasional mix of brands, which you know, Skahoy is um, easily able to handle on the Blue Pill platform. So that's a really powerful, unique feature of our controllers that you can mix and match brands as you want. Now, we have a bunch of cameras here. Typically, it could be like 50. We have had positive reports that we can easily handle that many cameras. And even if it was a problem, we have ways to load balance as well. That would be something like splitting out some cameras, groups of cameras to be managed by a single blue pill, which would then be like the proxy that would um, ease up com communication into the react to the, the sense of orchestrating software that makes it all come together. Anyway, we have the camera selector here and typically you would uh, then enter in here, you could change the names of the cameras for displaying the, um, to have them display correctly uh, above the buttons uh, on the controller. And I also want to bring attention to what we typically uh, manipulate over here, a routing index, a tally index and, and things like that. So the, um, a tally index, for instance, would be a reference to the input source on a video switcher for which, from which to uh, to get the tally information. The frame link window is if you want thumbnails to be captured by a grabbing device, the uh, frame link uh, device from Skahoy. And then we also have the routing index. That is typically what happens when you press the key to select the camera. You can um, use the routing index to instruct a video router or an aux on a switcher to go to a specific input source and bring that up on the screen in front of the operator. But today we are sort of reverting that around. So we'll be using this routing index um, to actually indicate which input are we listening for, for this camera on a given output on the router. That's what our virtual trigger will do in this case, because we are going to use virtual triggers to make this work. Now, uh, let's just see if I can bring this down. Yes, and then we go into configuration here so we can see the PDC Extreme. Hopefully you have seen this before. Um, the PDC Extreme can be configured in the configuration tab and will be working quite a lot in here. The configuration for the PDC Extreme that currently drives it is uh, in this layer and all the sub layers. And the first thing I wanna do is to educate you a little bit about what is involved in camera selection on such a complex device like this one. So we'll go into the uh, simulation mode. And uh, in simulation mode, it basically means that if I press any of these buttons like this one, it will select the camera. And now in this case, the camera is connected. Camera number one was the one that is on my network. So we're actually seeing a real camera here. And I can make changes to the blue gain and, and so on on the um, 
CIN 500 in our showroom facility at Skahoy. If I select the second camera, uh, we should basically see nothing because this is one of the cameras that are not connected. Let's go back to the home screen. You can see the first one is connected, the one with ID number one, all the others, ID two, three, four, and so forth are not. And we have a bunch of uh, Panasonic cameras here as well, which are also not uh, connected, obviously. If we go back to configuration and if we um, look at the camera selector down here, you see we have all these uh, Canon cameras lined up in the camera selector from one up to, uh, to 10. I just want to quickly go back to the home screen and rearrange a little bit so we get some of the Panasonic cameras up in front here. All right, so the Panasonic cameras and the Canon cameras just represent two different brands. And the way we manage that, because that is the two different sets of commands being sent to each one, is, um, oh, wait a second. I actually do have a Panasonic camera. The AWUE70 uh, is on an IP address that I could easily install here. So let's just quickly go and do that. IP address, I think this one. And we'll see this is going to be connected. Yes, perfectly nice. So we go back uh, here and we should see uh, if we click this one, select this camera, then we have uh, some values up here that uh, come from that Panasonic camera. Obviously, if we change another one, which is not connected, we also see it's not connected up here, then we'll just see uh, blank values in the displays. But anyway, for all that matters today, which is uh, selecting cameras and um, being able to do that from a video router, uh, we, we don't really need to have physically connected cameras. We just need to see these buttons change around. So uh, the thing that is, I promised that I would take a look at the camera selector. Now, the camera selector is obviously something that is orchestrated from the home screen. It is based on the home screen being the place where you can easily just add cameras and then you can set up the associated inputs for tally and for routing and all these wonderful things. So, um, and, and that takes away a lot of complexity and gives you a lot of power actually. The, the consequence of that is that the configuration is driven automatically by something called generators. So the table that is underlying this camera selection is basically like an Excel spreadsheet with a lot of rows and some columns. And in each column, we have information about each camera, like the device number, the name of the camera, which configuration we are running on. Notice this configuration is called Canon XE Pro Basic. And we have one for PVC cameras, uh, for, uh, Panasonic cameras called Panasonic PVC Pro Basic. That, that could potentially be multiple configurations for Panasonic and uh, Canon cameras in here. You will see that for Canon, we have two different. We have one for the um, PDC cameras, probably this one. And then we have one for the cinema cameras, like uh, the EOS series and so on. Uh, on the Panasonic side, we have different configurations, but it seems to be for studio cameras and other such cameras. We have only one currently for Panasonic PC, but that could be multiple. Like one could configuration could be really simple and another one could be super complex and involve all kinds of uh, matrix settings and so forth. For now, we just have one. But it's important to know that when we change to a Panasonic camera, we are running off a different configuration because we'll see that as a task in the camera selector that we do that. For the tele forwarding, uh, let me see, tele index, routing index, and frame link window, something is also happening over that. We'll not talk about that today, but we will see it when we study how the camera selector works because it also has to pick those values up and install in a variable in the system. So the system knows how to, um, to work with the right tele source on a video switcher and so on. All right, so this is the underlying foundation that generates basically the camera selector, which are two layers you see right here on the um, uh, left side. Okay, so for instance, on, on, on the control itself, if you click this button, then you'll basically cycle through the number of pages that exist. So we have almost 20 cameras and I feel like, hey, let's just add a few more. So uh, I'll just manually go in here and let's search up, well, yeah, we could search up a Sony camera, FR7. That's a popular one nowadays. I think we would be above 21 cameras. Let, let me just see. Yes, 18, 21. We have 21 cameras. And it means that now, uh, no, I, I don't know if you notice, but we have now camera one, two, and three. Those are three layers automatically generated by the generator on this layer called camera selector. And those three layers are the layers that has behaviors, automatically generated behaviors that will be active 
as I am toggling through the pages. So you see the fact that I now added another two cameras means that we have a camera page for the last camera because we can have 10 at a time. And then on the last row here, you'll see that camera number one is one of the Sony FR7 cameras that I was adding. Okay, so I can cycle through here or I can just go to the home page by a single click on this one. So that's what comes out of the generators down here. If I click the generator, then, and let me just give myself a little more space, then the generator is one that will be taking this constant set camera selector and it will iterate over it and then it will generate actions called cam one up to 10 or uh, actions. This is behavior aliases. And for each of these, uh, yeah, it will generate one with the content from that row in the constant set and it will use this template behavior. So if I look inside of this, if I click in this one and I would prefer to just view it in JSON, sorry about that, but um, then we see, oh, this behavior is actually using a parent ID called Skyhoy Util Lib Extended Camera Model Select. That sounds a little bit like a master behavior meant or designed to do this camera selection work for all our PVC controllers. So the cool thing is that we can click this button, show parent behavior. And if I just format this code, you'd see this is the JSON code that drives it. You can sort of see an echo of all these constant definitions are the ones that we found out there in the table. And notice those names, route index, tally index, link selector in particular, and device index in particular. Those are really important. Uh, color and camera name, uh, they are being used to, uh, to as uh, placeholders for the camera names that can go into the displays in various ways. But the important thing that I want to bring your attention to is the event handlers down here. Because these event handlers, let's see what is happening. Whenever I press a button on the camera selector, we have um, an event handler that says clear route flag when I am releasing. So this has something to do with routing. And today we will not listen to that one. Set route flag, flag is what happens when I'm, it's, you see act up, binary type act up means when I release the button. So um, so basically clear and set route flag is something that will change a bit inside of the controller when I press and when I release the camera selector button. Let's move on. The set cam is one that um, will react when I release the button. And then it will basically for the variable called device index, it will set the constant device index associated uh, with this uh, particular behavior definition on the uh, controller. Ah. Then it has this event preprocessor defined. And I'm sorry, but this is the code it takes to make an event depend on you releasing a button before one second has passed. It looks complex, but this is how it works at the moment. And we may have a shortcut in the future, but right now we don't. And it means that if you have a button, if you have an, a trigger that you want to only be valid from within the first second of pressing the button, then this is how you do it. This time window to previous trigger. 1000 milliseconds. So this is what will make sure that when we short press the button, it will just select the camera. And this should be seen in um, opposition to the long press, because we have something called toggle device down here. And um, first of all, it is actually depending on whether the link selector variable equals the link selector constant in your constant set. But then it is also with this event preprocessor here, it is actually waiting for 1000 milliseconds. This is what this line says. And it's only if you hold the key down for 1000 milliseconds at least, then it will actually send this. What it will do in that case is it will add the device index to the existing um, variable called device index down here. Then we have something called toggle name that will, let me see, add the name apparently so that we'll have multiple names to that one. We have um, toggle route, uh, so related to routing and to tally and so on. But, so, but, but tally and routing, we'll just ignore that for this session. At this point, I would like to just escape this complex configuration and show you how it works in real life. So let's just shut that down and then zoom in here. So with all these things that the camera selector does, let's just see what happens when I click these. I'm now in, in simulation mode. So as I'm clicking through, you see that it's just changing between one camera at a time. But notice if I press and hold, 
then this camera is added to a collection. Now I have two cameras selected, really. And it means that if I press the, the uh, record preset button, it is going to record preset number one on two cameras. Then I can press and hold this one, but nothing happens. And the reason why nothing happens is because the link selector um, value is doesn't match the one for this button. And that was a condition that we also saw inside the behavior. But if I go over to another camera that runs on the same configuration, I can safely press and hold and you'll see that now a third camera is added to my selection. Adding these to the selection is happening on an almost global variable called device index. You see it right here. This variable device index has camera two, then one, then three selected, and it goes together with the link selector um, variable, which is the one that holds the reference to the currently um, selected configuration. And that configuration is what gives you the menu and all the things up here on these buttons and so on. So if I click, let's just take one of the Panasonic cameras. If I click that one, I'm a little sorry for us having to scroll forth and back here. Um, I don't know how to disable that, unfortunately. But it, it just jumps forth and back. You can see the link selector is now different. It says Panasonic camera and it says um, device index number 11 for this one. Let's uh, just select the one just next to here. And then we scroll down again. You see now it's device index 17. If I press and hold this one, we should see 17 and 11 over here. Yes, we do. So that is consistent with what I just said. And now if I press and hold the Canon camera, we don't see anything in this case. Okay, guys, um, what we need to do is to have this um, virtual trigger that will be listening to a video hub. After all this introduction, I think it's time that we get connected to that video hub so that we can basically listen in on the changes that happens on this one. So we'll just add a device. I will uh, discover devices on my network here. And I think I have a smart video hub somewhere. Uh, we take this one for the main rack. Yes. OK, we connect to this one. And we see we are connected to a smart video uh, hub on our network. And I have it right here. So I basically need to de decide for some sort of, um, let's just pick one of these outputs, like uh, a not connected output, apparently, destination on the net video hub. So basically, the idea is that if I had this video hub visually in front of me, or a Blackmagic panel, or a Skahoy panel changing routes on this video hub, I want my PC Extreme to listen in on changes to these uh, routes and then use those to select camera on the controller. That is the, the, the thing we want to do. And for the um, <clears throat> to make this easy for us, I think we'll just listen, uh, associate the um, the numbers. Yeah, okay, let's see. I, I said that I would use the routing index here to, to basically do that. So let's just for the first two, three, four, we'll just uh, do that. Then we can now reverse it and say for the next four cameras, we just do it the reverse way. I think we should be able to remember that just so that we see you know, that this is actually something you can assign arbitrarily. But we are now assuming that all our cameras um, are somehow associated with that video hub in a meaningful way. So when we make these route changes, then um, the camera should be selected. OK, so let's go to the configuration again here. And then down on the root layer here, I will click it. And then I'll add a virtual trigger. OK, so virtual triggers right here. Now, uh, camera select. From Video Hub. Okay, yes. So we'll just um, basically be working with this one. It is a um, binary. Um, it's it's a bin binary virtual trigger that we want to do, and we want to drive it from our constant set. And um, I am wondering, maybe show more. Yes, constant set reference. So this would be a reference to the constant set we're using called camera selector. Camera selector, like this one. OK. And um, then the condition that we want to set up is basically, let's go to the device call. We will select this, and then we'll say the route input to output, like this one. And we need to select an output now. So let's just quickly go over here. We had output <coughs> or destination 7 in mind. We'll just pick this one. So if our video hub um, 
device index number one, route input to output for output number seven equals, and then over here we need to find out what it is it has to equal. And this is where we use the uh, literal values because we will be using the behaviors constant property and then <clears throat> it was called route index, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if you have any options here. No, it's not that clever. Route index, okay. So if it matches route index, that would generate a binary trigger to do um, to do certain things, which is the behavior that we'll now create. So we'll just click create here, and then we can go edit this behavior. Now, this is the moment where I would basically want to do a little bit of uh, JSON uh, editing for this one. And um, um, Yes, well, um, I kind of like to, to view it in the, um, mm, okay, let's just quickly throw in an event handler. Um, we had one called setcam, I remember, but <clears throat> we just create this one like that. And uh, after having done that, I will revert over to the JSON editor here and then format it. Ah, I don't know why it did not create that. Anyway, I had hoped that it would setcam. Just create new. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but anyway, um, what, what I would do is to actually um, now copy paste code from the template behavior you use in the camera selector. So I go back to my generators here and then I'll be looking at my template behavior that we had. Um, and we will go to the parent behavior, format this one. And then I will basically copy these event handlers. Now, remember, this is um, these event handlers are executed the moment I press a button, and depending on how that button press is um, is looking. So I'll just copy this because what we now want to do is to use the virtual trigger to also do this, the, the, basically the same thing as the camera selector does, but when we see a change on the video uh, router, that's what the virtual trigger does for us. So we can go back to this page and uh, I feel like just checking the JSON code out here. Yes, because now you see the JSON code in its entirety for the virtual trigger. You see there's a reference to the uh, constant set here. It's binary mode, mute on init, yeah. Um, binary active if. Uh, that's fine. And then probably here we'll just paste in the event handlers that I just did. But we need to clean up in these event handlers because we don't need all of them. So first of all, let's just format the code. And <clears throat> I somehow don't. Ah, yeah. Okay. We need a comma right here. Otherwise, it won't be happy. Clear route flag. No, I don't want to do any routing. That's the first thing that that is uh, clear. I don't want to do that. So I can remove that. The set cam it clears and sets the camera variable. Um, obviously, I um, w w listening to the router won't have what should not trigger any um, setting multiple cameras at a time. So. I basically for the set cam action that sets the camera, I can remove the event preprocessor here because I want that to happen anytime that we have this trigger coming in. And I can also remove the binary type act up because it's not supposed to happen when we release it. That means that would be when the route is changed to something else. No, we need to have, have it happen when the route changes the first time. So this is the right thing. But it is true enough that it is listening to the const uh, to the constant called device index and uh, affecting this variable called device index. Set the frame link window. That also makes sense, but we can remove the free processor here because once again, if we were to, we, we had the frame link device active, then we would do that. We can also remove the, or we should remove the binary type here. What about setting model? Uh, once again, this is a event preprocessor that will have it happen only within a release inside of a 1000 millisecond time window. So we remove that. So basically, we have uh, three event handlers that are pretty much the same, which is nice. Okay, then we have something called set name. That's probably fine as well. Let's just keep this. And because it will set the name variable camera name being used on the RCP Pro. So this would also work on RCP Pro. Then set route. This is something I would disable because we are not setting any routing when this happens. So please 
do not do that. I think that tally index is valid. So let's just remove that. So it's also good, but not set routing. And then we get to all the toggle. All the toggles are when you press and hold the key for longer time to add it to a group. And in this case, we can safely remove that entirely because we are not going to use that. And now, as it always is with JSON, if I try to press save, I get this error message and then look for the small wavy lines because it's probably because you had a comma too much or you have a or you forgot to set a comma. You need to set commas inside of the JSON structure. OK, <clears throat> so basically, I have my event handler set up to select the camera, the device index variable, to set the frame link window, to set the link selector variable, which is the configuration name and the camera name, and also the tally index. Five things, save, let's do that. Ooh, so I wonder if this works. Honestly, there's a bit of a lack of tools that could be super cool and nice to have for seeing this, but let's just try and see what happens if I change routes over here. Wow, <laughs> it worked. That's amazing. You see, it's actually changing down here. And let's just see what happens to the variables over on this side. Actually, to, to make it kind of complete, then let's go back to the camera selector because we have multiple things that we're setting. We are setting the camera names. Yeah, OK, we can just watch those names. Yes, watch what, those names. The tally index, let's just, uh, for the fun of it, set it to 1, uh, 2, no, wait set it to 11, 22, so that we can really see the, the difference just for the first three. OK, and then we go back to the configuration here. So um, and make sure that we are looking at the variables over here because we have the camera name, we have the device index, device index and link selector are the two really important things. And then we have the camera name for sort of convenience used on RCP Pro. We have also the tally index down here that we should see change. But now let's go and use the router. So we click the first one and you see tally index got set to 11. The camera name is set to CIN 500. The device index is one and the configuration for Canon is also here. Now let's go into number two. We saw tally index changed to 22. The name is updated. Device index number two, still a Canon camera. But now the third camera was a Panasonic camera. So you'll see that it now changes the link select over to that one. The device index is updated to 11. The camera name has changed. Tally index is 33. Let's move on and see what happens on number four. Tally index is now blanked out because we did not enter anything for it. And then you can see that, yes, it works like this. So really, we have the video hub driving our camera selection on the PVC Extreme. And this is uh, just a super cool example. You can have it listen to anything basically and let that drive the camera selection in here. The thing is that camera selection is a complex thing on our PC controllers because it both has to include uh, tally, it has to include routing, it has to include the name and also the configuration that is being used. And this is why we had to go through all these hoops um, to basically copy paste all the event handlers of the physical camera selector behaviors down here. Um, into a virtual trigger listening to that external device. But thanks for following. I hope it was useful for some of you guys or inspirational for the rest of you. This is really when Reactor is being pushed to the limits.